Hello, my people. My name is Meacham. I'm your college counselor. And today we're talking about the SAT curve, like my curves. Hmm. After every single SAT that has ever been taken, you would see some video talking about the curve for the test. Well, what is the curve? And how does it work on the digital SAT? On previous SAT exams, everybody around the world got the exact same test on the exact same day. And so each one of those tests had a special curve that would tell you, you know, how many points you got based on how many questions you missed. Websites like the College Panda have been publishing tables of these curves by taking data from thousands of test takers and sort of reverse engineering them to figure out which test was harder or more forgiving. A test that was really hard might have a generous curve like this, where your score doesn't really go down very much with your first few mistakes. But an easy test might look more like this, where you have a really really steep drop because missing just one or two questions could cost you a lot of points. So now that we've had the first international digital SAT, how do we figure out the curve? Here's the thing, there isn't one, okay? There is no curve. How can there be no curve on the digital SAT? It all has to do with adaptive testing. Because each person in the test room gets a different test, there's really no single curve that could be applied to all of the SAT exams that have been taken. Instead of having an overall curve for the whole test, each question is worth a certain number of points. As I experimented a little bit with the practice tests in Blue Book, I found that like one mistake could be worth as much as 30 points, but it could be less. It depends on the difficulty of the question. If you make a mistake on a hard question, you'll probably only lose 10, maybe 20 points. But if you make a mistake on an easy question, you could expect to lose as much as 30 points off of your test. That's why getting the hard module on the second part is important. Getting the hard module means you have a higher floor. You can't go below a certain point because you're getting questions that won't take away as much from your score. Hey, this is Meacham from like two days before I actually post this video. And I just wanted to interrupt myself to point out that College Board is full of shit because they say in their guide for educators that all questions are scored by giving one point for each correct answer and that hard questions count the same as easier questions. And so as I was editing this, I thought, did I just invent some bullshit out of my ass? And the answer, people, is no, I did not. Let me show you why College Board is a bunch of liars and why you can't trust anything they say. Because here is, I just retook practice test one just to confirm this. I have one incorrect answer, but I have this incorrect answer on the hard module right here. I purposely did the last question, number 54, incorrect. Okay. Everything else, as you can see, is perfectly fine here. Now, let's go back to my uh, practice one test, you'll notice I have 770. This time I have 780. Look at the difference. Where did I make my mistake on this practice test? Again, I did this intentionally in order to figure out the truth. One incorrect answer. This time I did a question in the first module, a question that would have been considered easier. It was a basic punctuation question. So again, don't trust anything College Board tells you. This idea that all questions are worth the same, that hard questions count the same as easier questions, is not true, okay? So there is no curve. There simply is just values for each question. Hard module questions will hurt you less. So if you get the hard module, you're in a better position. And now let's go back to the rest of the video I made. But there's another reason why adaptive testing really makes it hard to plot a curve for the digital SAT. And that's because everybody has a different test. Well, not everybody. 25 people have a different test. Let me explain. This is College Board's guide for test centers, okay? For the digital SAT. And it gives instructions for how they should handle the test setup. And something really important to note here is the number of people that can be allowed in a test center room. This example right here actually shows like a bigger classroom, but notice that it's limited to just 20 seats and these other ones are like X'd out over here. College Board says that there's a maximum of 25 people per room, but they typically recommend 20. And that leads me to believe that they can't produce more than 20 or 25 unique test forms. If you went to a school with 50 people, maybe two people got the same exact test. Now, College Board says that the digital SAT forms are going to be comparable, but unique. Kind of like twins or chicken sandwiches from fast food restaurants. Comparable but unique. The tests are going to be comparable in the sense that they're going to have the same number of easy, medium, and hard questions 
for the first module. And then in the second module, well, if you get a hard module, your hard module would be comparable to somebody else's hard module. But at the end of the day, all the test forms are unique. So clearly they have a large bank of questions. And some people even reported seeing some of the questions from the practice test. So I imagine they still have a lot more to make. Speaking of more stuff to make, I still have to make a lot more digital SAT material for you. I have been working on some stuff that it's gonna be used in one of my Monday live stream classes. If you wanna check that out, you can. I've been streaming every Monday with my English class from the digital SAT. And big shout out to Zajana and Muhammad who won my contest and got to be part of the class and have been attending the class. Uh, it's been a real pleasure working with people from the channel. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody who's been like, supporting this. It's been super cool. Anybody telling you that there is a curve that they've cracked for the digital SAT is just wrong, okay? So there's really no sense in comparing your scores to other people's scores anymore because you're not gonna know what the differences were on their test. They could have had completely different questions. They could have had an easy module or a hard module in the second part. You don't know. So stop comparing your results to other people's results. Instead, what I want you to do is put your results in the comments because what we can do is try to figure out how much a question is worth. Tell us, okay, what did you get on your scores? Did you think your second modules were harder, about the same, or were they easier? Share your scores. I wanna know what you got on this digital SAT. It's a whole new test, whole new system, and the only way we're gonna figure it out is by working together. And I really wanna understand just, you know, how hard this test is when it comes to grading. While there is no curve anymore for the digital SAT, we can determine how many points you lose when you make mistakes. And that can really help guide us because we can figure out, okay, what kinds of questions are you most likely to miss? And then how can we improve on those so that we minimize our errors to the lowest number possible? That strategy has always worked for the SAT and I know it's gonna work even more for the digital SAT. Since there's no curve anymore, all we can do is really just look at our own results, try to get better, and do a better job the next time. And speaking of next time, I have another class coming up that's gonna open up in June for the August SAT. If you're interested in getting to that June class, then you can go to prepwithscore.com and hit me up and talk to me about it. And I got so much more stuff coming up about the SAT, but also about other things like universities that you need to check out and other important things for your college application process. I've said it before, the SAT is not the most important part of your application. And if you're focusing 100% on this, you're missing out on so many other things that are more important for you to get into universities. So make sure you follow the channel and check out all the other stuff that we're doing here. It's not just about the SAT, it's about so much more. You are more than a number. And that's why this channel does more than just SAT stuff.